Hey there. So we have a full moon coming up. Um, the full moon technically is uh, in the wee hours, 1.15-ish uh, uh, Pacific time on Monday, November 27th. And uh, so I'm Marina Orms here with your Astro Vibe for Sunday, November 26th. And we're looking at this full moon as it is coming into its fullness and throughout the day today the moon is in Taurus we're still uh connecting with the earth remembering to get grounded remembering what we're thankful for and remembering that we connect with the earth through our senses so our our five senses right the senses that sense the physical world and how that uh, physical world uh, is not separate from us and so our gratitude speeds that uh, the beauty the bounty and the pleasure of the physical world as uh, we also receive that into our own physicality our own sense of being in a body and wanting our bodies to be healthy and happy and whole so with the upcoming full moon we've got some energy of what it means to know something what it means to not know or to think that you know, to think you know something and then to realize what you don't know. And uh, so we have the full moon in Gemini. So after uh, the moon uh, completes its time in Taurus, it will slide into Gemini. Early Gemini is opposing um, Mars in Sagittarius, which is together with the sun at four degrees Sagittarius. So um, that uh, as the moon goes into Gemini late in the day um, today, Sunday, November 26th, then it will um, form that full moon in the in the wee hours my time, which is Pacific time in the United States. So um, so with that Gemini energy, we have the um, the energy of curiosity of stepping into the, uh, the the curiosity of what it is we don't know, what we don't understand yet, and how we need to explore and, and investigate and gather data. So not really um, all that different from the way that we connect with the world through our senses. And um, if you think about a dog, I was walking my son's dog, um, earlier and just you know the way that a dog has to go and sniff everything right and it makes you realize how much information the dog is collecting through through the smells that it encounters in the world right and and if you think about smells um I don't know about you, but at least for me, like smells are information, right? So, so you get when you, when something is rotten, you, you you can smell it, right? You have that information that you're gathering through your senses, and so it's sensory information. And um, something smells wonderful, or, or you can tell what that smell is, or maybe it's like. Oh, I don't know exactly what it is, but there's that thing that um, that that smell is, and I can't quite put my finger on it, right? But smells are information. Um, so are tastes, right? And and colors and textures and visual things and all the things that we can perceive or um, pick up with our senses. And so now you go from that energy, that dynamic of the um, zodiac sign of Taurus, and the moon goes from that Taurus place into Gemini, where it's about how we um, gather and process and synthesize the information itself. And so now, you know, now you're taking the, the smell and, and with the example of the dog, you know, the dog is gathering the smell, but now the, do the dog is starting to put together a story, right, of who was here, what happened, what do I know, what do I not know, and, and what do I still have curiosity about, right, based on, on what I know uh, from what I'm smelling, but also some, you know, information that I don't have, or um, what, and so, you know, I don't know how much the dog is thinking about all that, but... <laughs> But for us, right, we might be um, 
uh, processing the information of like, well, where did that smell come from? How did it get there? What happened? How do we, how did we, um, how do we create that story of what happened and how we have arrived here? So, um, so we're thinking about information and this Gemini full moon is the energy of information what we are curious about, what we know, and what we don't know. And because it is a full moon, which, you know, beautifully reflects the light of the sun and also is a culmination of the seed that was planted at the new moon in Scorpio, right? So we're, we're in a moon cycle that has that Scorpio dynamic quality theme throughout it. And that Scorpio energy is bringing in the, the sense of transformation, of rebirth, of letting things go that no longer serve so that we can step into new ways of being. And there can be feelings, right? Emotions that go along with that letting go process. So, so how this Gemini full moon is the culmination of something you've been working on on an internal um, level, right? In a feeling way, in any working through your emotions, excuse me, or the energies or dynamics in your life, um, right? We have energy fields and patterns that show up in our lives. And Scorpio is also about those and how they change when they need to change. So with the with the full moon now reflecting the full light of the sun having that uh, experience of illumination or revealing something we are getting to see more clearly what it is we've been working on or processing or the ener the ways that energy has been moving that we can feel but we can't quite make sense of or or understand the bigger story. <laughs> so, um, so with this Gemini full moon, it's really about what do we know? What do we not know? What are the pieces of information we do have? What are the pieces of information we still need to um, learn more about or investigate or go gather to fill in the pieces of the puzzle? And so we also have the sun and Mars in early Sagittarius, the um, the energy of Sagittarius, which opposes Gemini um, and signs of the Zodiac that are in opposition to each other tend to be two sides of the same coin. So you get like this version and then you get the polar opposite, but they're also dealing with um, in many ways, the same kinds of things just from different angles. Okay. So, um, so with the sun and Mars in Sagittarius, Sagittarius is the sign of synthesis of integration. So it is the bigger story. It is, you know, how we tell the what the narrative or how we fill in the story with um, what what gives meaning to the information we've gathered and some of that is about putting the connecting the dots of the different pieces of information some of it is adding in our perspective or uh, the meaning that we need to help us uh, get that sense of the bigger picture and uh, what what this is all about, right? What How does it speak to us? How does it create a bigger picture of meaning? How does it help us become more of who we are? So with that Sagittarian energy, we, we have the energy of Jupiter also, right? Jupiter is... Um, a ruler of Sagittarius. It's connected. It has the same family of energies. It's in the same family of energies. So, so they're both about faith, about optimism, about where you place your trust, how you're going to expand, how you're going to grow. So whereas Gemini is about the data Sagittarius is about how we synthesize that data, connect the dots to tell a bigger story or understand or make meaning. So, um, and then from that meaning, right, when you have 
meaning, which can be through a philosophy, which can be religion, right? Traditionally, Sagittarius has to do with beliefs and belief systems. So some sort of dogma, whether it's religious dogma or otherwise, <laughs> it could be scientific dogma. It could be any kind of uh, belief that is a belief system that people have invested themselves in. It is a paradigm under which we operate. And now the other side of the coin comes in when we become too entrenched in our beliefs. So when we become dogmatic, right, entrenched in that, that set of beliefs or that way of understanding or that paradigm, we need that Gemini energy to balance that out, to remind us, you do also have to question it right? You, it's not whatever you have reached as a truth also needs to um, be questioned. And so the truth needs to evolve. It needs to grow. It needs to encompass new pieces of information, new pieces of data, um, new things that happen along the journey, right? That's, that's why we need that long journey because we get all the pieces of data along the way and the deeper, richer story that we can put together at the end of that journey has a more comprehensive meaning, more lasting meaning because it had different phases along the journey where we made meaning or we collected more data or we cast doubt and then we asked questions and then we adapted and evolved our beliefs to um, come to something that is richer and more lasting. So this particular full moon is about two things. It's about how we question the beliefs of the past. So how we um, cast doubt or investigate further or ask deeper questions or even just question why we've always done things that way or why we think things should be that way. So it's just that process of asking questions and uh, being willing to go like the dog uh, out with that sense of enthusiasm and excitement to go and gather more information and see what else is out there to um, collect as data for the information that can help us um, deepen the story we are telling or the way that we understand things. And then, um, the so, so one thing is about how we question. The other thing is about how we reach that bigger picture of meaning. And so how are we going to update or upgrade our, um, our beliefs, our, be our systems of belief, our paradigm, our umbrella of our philosophy, our story, our narrative? So how is that being updated to more fully reflect who you are becoming and to integrate and synthesize the new pieces of information you have been collecting even as you continue to collect the, the information? So, so it's about this back and forth, this polarity, this dynamic between um, how we tell the story and how we change the story based on questioning our assumptions, um, right? So even in a scientific process, you have an underlying assumption. And it's important uh, for the scientific process to state your assumptions, right? To identify what are the assumptions you're making um, going into this experiment. And Gemini is very experimental. But you have to um, get clear about what, what your as assumptions are at the outset, because there are um, things that are coming from your own expectations, um, your own underlying uh, beliefs or values or understanding of the world or understanding of what objective truth is even, <laughs> because all all objectivity, um, right, rests on uh, someone's interpretation of what is objective. So we can get deep really fast here. But at any rate, um, 
this particular full moon is about that dynamic between beliefs and questions, how we gather information, and then how we update or upgrade our beliefs based on the new data, the new pieces of information. Um, so so uh, getting curious, opening your mind, asking the deeper questions, in fact, questioning your own questions, right? Question why, why do I think that? Why, why do I think it is that way or should be that way or has to be that way, right? So, so um, asking those deeper questions and uh, questioning your assumptions and questioning where you're coming from on those. And, and there might be something even in your underlying assumptions that needs to be questioned or um, needs to have some wiggle room, right? To be able to see things differently, to be able to open to those aha moments that allow you to um, understand things in ways you couldn't see them before. It's, it's a way of getting that bigger picture. Um, and so as you zoom out from being in the forest to um, seeing the the trees from above, right? Seeing the forest for the trees or, <laughs> um, so getting up into the sky gives you that bigger perspective of the forest and the higher you get, the smaller the forest becomes, right? So, so the forest in a sense is our story about our lives and our explanations that we give for what is so, why it is so, why it can't change or why we are limited or stuck in the ways that we think we are. And the bigger picture perspective we can get on that, the more we can question some of those underlying assumptions and um, allow that story or that theory of who we are to um to change right <laughs> uh even the things that we think are set in stone um have some wiggle room and you zoom out far enough so that's what this particular full moon is about and mysteriously it, right it's connected to that scorpio new moon so the energy of mystery um, the energy of how we are changing and transforming. And the, and the more we can allow in that spirit of mystery, of the unknown, of transforming, of allowing ourselves to be moved um, in ways that we might feel emotionally or energetically, but that is also taking us into a new possibility for ourselves, for our lives, and for this bigger picture perspective so that we can tell a new story for our lives and who we are and what is possible for us. And you can see how when you tell a new story about what's possible for yourself, you're also, um, it opens doors to being able to tell a story about what is possible for humanity, for the world, for um, for solving some of the problems in the world. So it's a, it's allowing us to see where we do have power, where we do have the ability to shift and change, where we do have the ability to become more, or um, more. What's the word? We're we're more encompassing of possibility than uh, than we have been in the past. More open to change. All right. Um, and then we have, so this full moon is also in a T-square to Saturn in early Pisces. Um, Saturn is just bringing in an extra piece that says what you thought you knew um, is maybe not what really is so. And especially when it comes to limitations, Saturn is the planet of limitations in Pisces, we have some dissolving of limitations. Um, think about putting a crystal like salt into water and then letting it dissolve and um, you lose your structure, right? But but the salt is still there. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, that energy of Saturn is, um, is creating illusions of our limitations that we get to work with, that we get to confront and come to terms with and work through. 
it's also reminding us that what it is we assume to be true um, can be reconstructed. It can be, right, structures can be deconstructed and they can be recreated in new ways. And that uh, Saturn is all about form, how we create things in the physical world. So just like a potter um, takes a lump of clay and makes it into a useful object, um, we can take things in our lives and uh, manifest uh, the things that that we want to experience, right? You can uh, take a lump of clay and turn it into the experience of a wonderful cup that you can hold in your hand and and sip tea from and the same thing with the things in our lives and when we can imagine the experience of sipping that tea we we have the the um uh the the materials right the raw materials that can be uh that, that can come together in the way that creates the delicious tea and the wonderful cup and the feeling of it in our hands. And so that is the things we want. It's the, the outcomes we want, the things we want to materialize or manifest. Um, so the things that you want for your life, if you can imagine them the same way you can imagine holding that tea and uh, sipping that delicious perfect temperature tea imagine the things that you want in your life in the same way and that allows the the um the things to crystallize around that desire right around the thing you getting clear about what you want it invites in the salt that is dissolved in the water to organize itself into the form that you are calling in. So that's how you do it. You imagine it, you feel it, you bring it into your body, you breathe it into your body, what it feels like to have that wonderful thing. And we've got this Taurus energy that we can call on as well to imagine things with our senses. We have the Gemini energy that uh, we can invite in to help us change our perspective, help us ask questions and question our assumptions, question our patterns, question our beliefs, question our limitations um, to open to that bigger sense of possibility. So Saturn's a player in this full moon as well. And uh, this is very much a culmination of this mysterious scorpionic energy dealing with the deeper processes, the deeper mysteries of life and working with that realm of the unknown so we can uh, call on what we haven't experienced yet and allow it to organize itself, right? To congeal, to form, to materialize. And um, so even though this is very much an air full moon, which is about information and thoughts and how we process things with our mind, we want to open to those possibilities of um, what we can call in through the way that we think about things and um, be that be that dog and go around and, and just check out what's out there. What does the world have to offer? What is the story being told that we can take in um, by sniffing around and checking things out and taking things in um, through our senses that is just information about the world around us that um, allows us to think about things differently and connect with that different new story, the bigger picture, that uh, bigger picture of possibility. All right. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Marina Orms here um, with your Astro Vibe. And also you can learn more about me at astrologyheals.com. I have openings to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, provide support for you in your transformational process to understand um, how to work with these energies and how they show up in your real life, right? With your real life concerns and challenges and issues and how to work with that um, through the wonderful support that your chart offers. So um, that's how I can help you to, uh, to connect with that bigger picture of what your chart is helping you see 
right? How, how the underlying energies and um, how these dynamics are playing out in what is showing up in your life and how you can work with that from a more empowered perspective. Astrologyheals.com. And um, you can check out that uh, package that I have for working with me for five sessions over a period of time to really get that deeper support and have an opportunity to learn um, more about your chart and uh, work with it over time to really deepen into the truths it is helping us connect with. So uh, thank you again. Thank you for being here. If you're enjoying these videos, please hit the subscribe button. I am here every day with Astrology for Unshakable Self-Care. Uh, there will be more. Uh, check it out. We, I give you an update every day on what's going on and how you can work with it for um, the, the best self-care for you. And thank you so much uh, to all of you who commented over the Thanksgiving holiday. I appreciate all of you too, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.